Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. You have need of endurance, is the title of this devotion. And that is something we all need. You know, it says in Romans chapter 5, endurance work at patience, and patience work at character. And character is what causes our lives to become more like Him, you know. It's, it's a very important part of our development that our character is being formed and shaped by the Heavenly Father. It says in Psalm 100, verse 4, it is not we who have made ourselves, but the Lord is our maker. It is God who has made us and not we ourselves. David, he, in Psalm 51, when he realized the low sinful nature to which he had given way in his actions, said, I was conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. In other words, I've had this sin nature all my life. And he realized that that sin nature, if it is given, if it's given way, it will lead you astray. But thank God when you follow Jesus and are set free from sin for this purpose, 1 John 3 verse 9, he was made manifest to take away our sin. And you follow Jesus and you become like him. And you start having a character that does not fall short of God's glory, but embodies His glory, emanates His glory. And you could see that David really grew in his character because he says in Psalm 139, I was fearfully and wonderfully made, and this my soul knows very well. And he began to talk about how God made him, how God formed him in his mother's womb how God predestined him and how God's thoughts towards him were more than the stars of heaven and such knowledge was too great for him. And he had said, Lord, please search me and know me. And David was a man who allowed God to form and shape him just like Abraham, where God said to him in Genesis 12, I will make you. And in Genesis 17, God says to him, I have made you. Yes, that was some 25 years later. And it shows you how faithful God is to complete the work he has began. David says this in Psalm 138, verse 8. He said, Lord, do not abandon the work of your hands, but complete or perfect that which concerns me. Oh, I prayed that verse many times when I would be concerned that I was wearying the Lord with my ah, unconverted behaviors and attitudes, but praise God that He is able to convert us, to transform us inwardly constantly. But you have need of endurance. You need to not give up on God or on yourself. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on yourself. Don't, oh, it's no use. I'll never change. No, don't say that. And don't even believe that. And if people say it about you, just say, I know. I know, I'm so grateful that I believe in a God who can do the impossible because I agree with you, I'm quite impossible, but I believe, I believe that God will perfect that which concerns me. I love what Paul says in Philippians 1 verse 6, he says, I know the good work that God has begun, He in you, He will complete, He will perfect. Oh, praise God, when your faith begins to emerge from the, from the depths of, of despair and the depths of hopelessness and the depths of, oh, I'll never change, and begins to emerge in the light of the knowledge of Christ, and you say, glory, glory, Father, for whom you have called me and made me to be. I am born of your Spirit. I made a life unto you. I now share the heavenly, holy life. Oh, glory, glory, and the Holy Ghost keeps coming, washing you, renewing you, transforming you and making you like Jesus. Oh, I love all these scriptures that talk about this in Titus 3 and 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18 and in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 and all these different places. My goodness, Father, the word that you've given us is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path so that we don't give up. We endure. 
we persevere and press through as we take a hold of that for which Christ took a hold of us, Philippians 3, and we don't let go. Moses said to Israel that was standing in front of the promised land, just about to enter with Joshua. He said in Deuteronomy 4.4, which he read just before he passed, which he wrote just before he passed away, he says in Deuteronomy 4.4, you are here and alive today because you held on to the Lord. Yes, he's got a hold of you, but you got to also hold on to him. Amen. Oh, don't give up, friends. Don't give up. And, and oh, if the pain of failure is too strong, then bow your heart and let it be more of wood for the fire of, of self-denial and embracing the cross and letting go of pride because pride is not an easy one to conquer within yourself. But Christ will not fail to give you what you need to see it fully crucified and no longer have a grip on you and cause you to make excuses for yourself, blaming others or having an attitude that is so contrary to him. No, he will conquer pride and fear and unbelief and doubt and everything inside of you that would cause you to do without of his glory. So let me read the scripture to you. I, but recall... Hebrews 10, 32, the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured, endured. After you were illuminated, you endured. Oh, what always fuels within us that spirit to endure is we get enlightened again through the Word. We get enlightened through these devotions, through reading the Bible, through hearing the Scriptures narrated to us, or books of Andrew Murray. Go on Librivox, L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot com, and, and, and you can for free listen to Andrew Murray's books, Holiest of All, Oh, I Can't Stop Listening to It, or The Spirit Life, or so many, or humility, or so many of others of his other books. And, and, and he recalled the former days after you were eliminated, it's how you endured a great struggle. You endured a great struggle. Come on. God has given you power to endure, even if the struggle is great. Endure. You will live through. You will outlive this struggle. You will outlive these battles. You will outlive these opposing forces. You will outlive. You will outlive it. It will fail, fall to the ground because Jesus has conquered it all and you will see victory. He says, listen, in verse 36, you have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Today, this is what we're here to do, is the will of our Father. Not my will, but thine will be done. Jesus prayed that. He struggled for you in Gethsemane as he sweat drops of blood, saying, Father, not mine will, but thine will be done. And he broke through for you and me to empower you and me not to seek to do our own will. Well, I don't like that. Well, I don't want that. Well, I don't. No, no more I will, I will, but thine will be done. And he, Jesus, overcame so that he can make you more than an overcomer through his grace. I want to encourage you today. Let the Holy Spirit enlighten you afresh and anew so that you can endure. Don't give up your confidence of faith, it says here in verse 35. It says, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Come on, let the Holy Spirit empower you. No, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to hold fast. I'm going to see the Lord fulfill His word in my life. I'm going to see His will come to pass in my marriage. I'm going to see His will come to pass in my own attitude, my own heart, my own mind. I'm going to see God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what I live to pray to the praise and the glory of God. And I guarantee your eyes will be bright with renewed light and your endurance will shine bright with joy in the Holy Spirit with an expectation of the miracles and answers. And more than that, you will share the eternal glory that God has predestined you to in Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good day. God bless you.